So this shoe right here was designed um, by Sean Witherspoon, who was a vintage reseller, a thrifter. Every year they have an Air Max day and Nike has a competition um, from designers to be able to, to get their design picked to actually be the shoe that Nike will um, produce, mass produce. And this shoe right here, Sean Witherspoon, uh, was selected and I voted for him. I voted for this shoe and because of that reason Nike uh, sent me a notification gave me an opportunity to buy this shoe at retail. Uh, many of us know that this shoe resells for five, six, seven hundred dollars. Um, at one point it was higher than that. But the steady rate, the, the steady resale value of the shoe right now is anywhere from five to seven hundred dollars. When it comes to sneakers and fashion, um, a hype beast is someone who has a love for something. Uh, a hype beast is someone who has a love for uh, luxury brands, whether it's a shoe, a sweater, the latest Supreme um, hoodie, or the latest release Jordan drop, or the latest Air Max drop, whatever it is, the latest drop of something. Um, that's the hype, that's the product, we're the beast. We're the ones who push it from the first leak of, of the first picture, what it might look like or the concept of it, to it actually releasing. It gets hyped up so much by us, which we are the beast. I got some uh, Chrome 6 Lows, what the Kobe 10s and Gamma 11s and scoring title 4s underneath. Alternate 89 fours, uh, UNCs, and then I moved a pair of retro 12s already. Got some Yeezys, Belugas, our first ones. Some sevens, some five red fives. The ones that came out today. I'm Jonathan Demotica. I'm the owner and founder of Boston Got Soul, New England's greatest sneaker convention. We are just having our 17th convention today. We started back in 2013. I started collecting sneakers back in 2012 when I was 12 years old, and here we are six years later and uh, we've built New England's greatest sneaker convention, so we've come a long way and we got a long way to go. For me, actually, I had a tragedy. So my house actually burnt down when I was in seventh grade, when I was 12 years old. With that being said, I'm a firm believer that when someone faces tragedy, they turn to some sort of escape. Some people go down what I think is the wrong route of drugs and alcohol and this and that, and some people go down different routes. I chose sneakers. I had this fascination with high-end sneakers, Jordans, you know, Nike basketball sneakers, stuff like that. And I just wanted every pair, but I mean, I just lost my house in a fire, so I didn't have two dimes to rub, to rub together. So with that being said, I actually, with a good friend of mine at the time, Nick, we used to start cleaning people's sneakers for five, ten dollars to, to clean their sneakers. We had our first business when I was in seventh grade. It was called JN and Restorations. And when that started booming, I started, you know, buying a few pairs of every release, taking pre-orders on sneakers and flipping it for stuff like that. And I just had this fascination with the sneaker game and how big it was and the cool, how cool it was and all these just wicked sick shoes, whether it was Jordans or Nikes or whatever it was. And, you know, I was 14 years old and my brother and I decided, you know, let's let's have our own sneaker convention in August, August of 2013. We decided that here we are more than five years later. And it's just, it's all about the game. You know, it's seeing the community grow the Boston sneaker community, New England sneaker community is just crazy. My name is Omar. Uh, I got into the sneaker game originally with the ones, the royal ones, the OGs. And like, yeah, I just started flipping from there. Got got a couple hundred bills. It felt amazing. It was it was great. Cause like I didn't have a job, I couldn't work at 14, but yo, I was making money, you feel me? I got the bread toast, that's ten and a half. Camped out for him for about eleven hours. Dead stock. I got him at Nike Town in Boston. These were never worn by MJ, but they were supposed to be general release. So there were supposed to be a lot of pairs, but I guess there weren't. And now they're reselling for a good amount. It's a great thing that these young kids, instead of thinking of doing something illegal to make money, they're thinking about selling sneakers. I think sneakers gave kids a great opportunity to, to make money and get their first feeling of what it's like to to do business. My name is Eamon Wabi. I live in Rivera, Massachusetts, and I'm part of the Vault Lifestyle. I've been with them since about August of 2017. I started with them when they had a pop-up shop for Kais Omar, and ever since that, it's just been fun having fun with them. 
when you sell something, it feels amazing. Like you notice like shirts like this, sweatshirts, you sell them for 400, 450, prices range. Once you sell something, it's crazy. You're like, oh, finally, I did this. It's like, it's an experience that you want. I'd say, I wish I could start all over again, just for the experience. The first time I sold something for profit, I was surprised I even sold it. And I was I was more joyful than ever. I sold a bait mask, which I bought for $60, and I sold it for 100 to somebody I knew. And I was surprised I even got the price that I wanted, but somebody still bought it. So I, I was gassed about it. This is a full shot pony. Glow in the dark all. The whole thing glows, so you're, you're glowing star. Usually, this goes for 450, and I got one for 210. That's why it's so special. I used to buy selling trade sneakers just like every other sneaker head when I was real little. Just uh, camping out at the mall, you know what I mean? Just buying any kind of shoe I could get maybe $10 profit on. Um, and then actually my local mall stopped in 2013 because a um, bunch of violence and a bunch of stuff like that. So we, we tried to resort to something else. And me and my brother Jonathan um, actually were like, why don't we hold the seat convention? And so as you can see and as you're going to see in the, in the video and stuff, um, we started Boston on Soul in 2013. Um, sh shaking our boots, um, September of 2013, never forget the day. Um, we needed 28 people, I believe, to break even at like admission price. We had 18 vendors, and now we're sitting here at like 150, 160 vendors, 2,000 people. Um, and I mean, it's just really just like chase after what you're passionate about and really just doing what you love. I mean, I haven't worked a day in my life, and I'm like a huge believer that me and my brother are. And, um, as, as you see, I mean, like, we just do it, we just do it because we try to put Boston on the map and we really just try to tie in the culture the best we can. We've had 17 conventions as Boston at Soul, and we have probably, like, a good couple hundred people that still, every single event, they'll come back. Not for some fact, like, they'll buy, sell, or trade sneakers or whatever, but they love the culture. Um, everyone really just wants to support each other out here. I mean, it's very, like, homey, very community-based. And so and that's what we try to highlight the most because, honestly, at the end of the day, like, it's, it's me selling a pair of shoes to you, and it's not just me trying to make a quick buck off you. It's the community feel. And so as you see behind me, we have we have little kids, you know what I mean, at the age of like eight, nine, ten years old coming to the events, even younger with their mom and dad, that just like to buy, sell, and trade sneakers because people like to actually express themselves wearing sneakers and fashion and apparel and stuff like that. And that's what we really try to do. We try to bring in kids like this right behind me. And we try to we really try to incorporate everyone into one building. And maybe, and even though it's only for five hours every couple of months, it still means the world to us and even more to our customers. So the thing with, with Boston Got Soul, we call it New England's greatest sneaker convention, not just because we're the biggest or have been around longer than anyone. It's because we provide an experience. I knew from when I started and my brother knew this, that we wanted it to be way more than buying, selling, and trading sneakers. We wanted to create an atmosphere and an experience that, that anybody, any millennial, any kid, anybody who had an interest in anything similar to it would like it. So with that being said, We've had basketball tournaments at the event. We've had video game tournaments at the event. We have a Fortnite tournament today. We've had tons of live performances, raffles, giveaways, special guests from professional sports teams, uh, big rappers like Cousin Stiz, stuff like that. So we tried to reach into every single market, and we're trying to reach more and more to make sure that you don't have to like sneakers or clothes to be here. It's more about just the culture of the youth and you know, just what's what's good and what's fresh and bringing all that together. Me, me and my brother, Jonathan, uh, he's only a freshman in college, I'm a junior. Um, I mean, we are considered like young players in the game and like really young hustlers ever since being 15 and 13 years old. Um, but I mean, our parents, like, they kind of just let us do like what we love to do and they didn't give us guidance, they didn't really tell us what to do necessarily. Um, they just kind of let us express ourselves in our own way. Um, and especially ever since my house burned down my freshman year of um, high school, it's just been like really tough for me and my brother and like we really want to find an outlet that we could really just express ourselves, be ourselves, and not only turn a, a good thing or a bad thing into a good thing, but rather turn this 
curse or our house burning down into something positive. But we were like, listen, like we love sneakers and let's let's try to build something out of it. And um, I just really I just really look into opportunity. And I mean, as anyone could see in 2013, I remember people used to laugh in our faces that we were holding a sneaker convention where kids could buy, sell, and trade sneakers. And now it's 2018, of, in March of 2018, and we're having 2,000 people at our events. We have people flying in from all different states across the country, and it's just like, it's truly a dream come true. I believe entrepreneurship is something I promote um, because it, it goes hand in hand with sneaker culture. Uh, when I was younger, it really was an opportunity to sell a lot of things, and in some cases, really only drugs. I mean, these kids right now can sell sneakers, they can sell it legally, they can bring them here for consignment, they can make money off of sneakers, they can sell money off of new sneakers, off of used sneakers, off of high beast clothing, um, and, and sought after rare items in the streetwear world. So it created a subculture of entrepreneurs that didn't even know they were entrepreneurs. They were just like, yo, I can sell these sneakers for more than I bought them for right now. I can go get in line, I can buy a pair of sneakers, and I'm getting paid for my time waiting in line, um, in, in essence, you know? And then it almost created a stock market for sneakers where, you know, if you held on to them a little longer, you could get a little more money, or um, in some cases, they would drop in price, you know, if if they were mass released, if, if, if they did a small release and you got it early, sometimes you want to cash out and keep it moving. Um, but I believe that I promote entrepreneurship. Um, I think kids come here to sell their sneakers of all ages, you know, adults, kids. Um, and, and I think it just gives them some a new outlet, something different, another opportunity to sell something that isn't illegal. Um, and I think uh, our generation didn't really have that opportunity. Sneakers are like a new hustle for kids, you know what I'm saying? It's like when I was in high school, cats sold white t-shirts. You know, we were in LA, we rock white tees. So you could go to the surplus and get a bunch of white t-shirts and then sell them for like, you could get a pack of them, like like five t-shirts for like a dollar fifty. Then we come to school and sell them for a dollar each. This is hustling at, at its rawest form. So now what kids are doing is they're buying sneakers and they're able to flip them. You can actually pawn sneakers. They have sneaker pawn shops right now. But that's your first hustle. Like my kid was off into sneakers. I said, you're gonna be into sneakers till you buy a car. Once he bought a car, he sold all his sneakers to get some rims and wheels and stuff. Then you play the car game. So it's just, as it goes up, even though this cat's my age that is still heavy sneaker heads. You know, DJ Khaled got a crazy sneaker collection. I never just been much of, that just wasn't my thing. But you got to remember, people collect trains, people collect stamps. Whatever is your thing, if that's your thing, I can't complain. My wife, if she was a guy, she'd be a sneakerhead because she collects heels. She likes shoes. Uh, I'm, I, I'm more into whips. I like cars. But uh, I ain't mad at the hustle. The fact that you can do it and actually make money, to me, that's fly. So I respect anybody out there that got the sneaker game down. One of my good friends, Ben Baller, out of LA sold his sneaker collection for two million dollars okay so this is not small it's not a small game if you really in it heavy I'm just not that knowledgeable about it I just need a pair of fresh clean sneakers on my feet it doesn't matter what kind they are and I'm a classic guy I still wear shell toe Adidas I still I got Air Force Ones on today I'm, I'm very classic just basic shit nothing crazy I don't like the, the fruity kind with all the different colors and the foam and the and the and all them extra soles and shit that ain't my style I, I like just basic clean lines on my sneakers you know that's my style